Well, it's time, as promised, for a supplement to Keith Barker and myself's 200-101 exam walkthrough for the ICND-2 exam. In this micro nugget, let's take a look at a point-to-point -point protocol simulation. So let's get to it. Here we have the simulation. Configure the PPP circuit between R1 and R2. Use the CHAP protocol in order to perform strong authentication. Use a shared secret of Cisco 123. Now, what I'm probably going to do to ease the configuration here in our simulation is on my scratch paper, so we know we are provided with scratch paper, I'm going to go ahead and say R1, R2. So I know where in my big topology here I need to focus. I'm going to say CHAP as a reminder of really what needs to be configured here. And then I'll go ahead and I'll jot down very carefully the exact shared secret we are to use. It's Cisco, uppercase, one, two, three, and then our exclamation point. So this will be a nice checklist as we are going through and focusing in the simulation in order to ensure that we've got everything correct. Now, my first step, I think here, my plan of attack, thinking through the approach that I want to take to solving the simulation, I want to go ahead and go to this circuit and inspect what Cisco has configured, if anything, for me already. So let's scrutinize any existing configuration. So in the exam simulation, I'm gonna fire up my console connection to R1 and I am going to inspect the interface in question, that's serial one slash zero, and notice I'll begin with a show run under that interface. Aha, so we can see there is indeed an IP address configured. Now, uh, let's see if the circuit is working at this point. I'm going to assume that the IP address on R2 is 192.168.10.2. Let's try that. Ping 192.168.10.2. And that ping works. Yeah, so I'm betting that this circuit is properly configured for the default WAN encapsulation. Because notice, under the configuration, there's nothing to do with PPP. By the way, we can do a show CDP neighbor just to confirm that that is R2 out there we are seeing. In fact, if we say show CDP entry asterisk, we can get the specific 192.168.10.2 address. Yes, indeed, that's R2. That is indeed the other side of the circuit. We've proven quite a bit. Let me just do this. Uh, I probably wouldn't do this in the exam, but just for our own education purposes here, let's do a show uh, IP interface. Or you know what? Let's just do show interface for serial one slash zero. What are we going to confirm here? Yeah, of course, that we are indeed in our default encapsulation for the circuit, which is HDLC. So now what we've just done is we've really come up with our configuration task list here, right? We need to go ahead and set the encapsulation to PPP. We don't need to worry about IP addressing. We'll leave that in place. Then we need to properly configure CHAP. So no big surprises here. We have to configure just kind of what they alluded to, right, in our scenario. Configure PPP, configure CHAP. But this was well worth exploring what was already configured on these devices, wasn't it? Yeah, because we want to make sure we're configuring everything we might need to configure in order to get full credit. I want to make sure these devices can reach each other over the circuit, and for that, we explored the initial configuration. Okay, so let's do this configuration. I'm going to go in, and I'm going to start, I'm going to start by shutting down the circuit. That's right, I'm gonna go into interface serial one slash zero and I'm gonna say shut down. I do not want to break my network 
forever. That goes for the simulated network in an exam. And we know that if we set one side to PPP and the other side to PPP, we are going to have an encapsulation mismatch. I don't want to break the network like that. So I'm going to shut this circuit down. Now, let's do this in steps, shall we? I'm not so sure if I would do it this way in the actual exam. I might save some time, but you know what? This won't be that time consuming. Let's do it in steps. We'll set the encapsulation to PPP. I'm going to slide over to the R2 device and make that same configuration change. Okay. And then we're going to no shut the circuit. And what we'll do is we'll do our ping test. Do ping 192.168.10.2. And look, everything is happy, happy. So we've gotten about 50% credit at this point, haven't we? Yeah. Uh, the simulations in your exam are partial credit. If we save our configs on R1 and R2 at this point, we'll get some credit, I would assume, because we have successfully converted this circuit to a point-to-point -point protocol circuit. All right, we're going to shut down again, though, because we're going for full points. We are now going to do our CHAP configuration. So what we do is we say PPP authentication and then you can use your context sensitive help. Notice CHAP is our option there. We need to run and do this same configuration on R2. So let's do that. PPP authentication CHAP. Great. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and, oh, and by the way, did I shut down the circuit? I hope so. Yes, I shut down the circuit. So we are in a shutdown state now. Great. Okay, so now on R2, we need to do our username and shared secret entry for the R1 device. So we say username, by default, that's going to be the R1 host name, username, and then we say password is going to be Cisco123 exclamation point. So there is on R2, the username and password entry for R1. Now we're going to slide over to R1 and put the R2 username and password entry. R2, oh, whoops, password, Cisco, one, two, three, exclamation point. That's it. We should be able to go into our interface now, serial one slash zero, and no shut. And all we're watching for here is an up, up status. Awesome. Can we ping? Of course, we can ping. We have successfully configured the point-to-point -point protocol on this circuit. We have successfully configured CHAP on this circuit. One last thing to do for full credit. Copy run star on R1 and then slide over to R2 and copy run star. It is worth pointing out that in my previous simulation micro nugget, I educated everyone about how you got to save to get full points and then I neglected to save to get full points. So I want to thank our YouTube audience for keeping me on task here in my simulations, not only our hypothetical ones here, but also our simulations in the Cisco exam environment. So this simulation, pretty straightforward. We just had to make sure that we didn't get in our own way, <laughs> right? Yeah, and you saw that I configured this particular simulation in stages. Let's review those steps. In step one, I checked what was there for our initial configuration on that particular circuit. In step two, I went and configured and tested PPP instead of the default HDLC. And then in step three, we configured the CHAP and we tested that by simply pinging across the circuit. In step four, of course, we saved our configuration.
Well, I hope you have enjoyed this supplement to Keith Barker and myself's exam walkthrough for 200-101. I'll be back to make many more supplemental additions to that course via these micro nuggets. As always, I hope this micro nugget has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.